What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, I'm gonna be doing a step-by-step -step guide on how to become a C-sharp developer. This is coming from somebody with no degree. I wish I would've gotten a computer science degree, uh, but it, to become a software developer doesn't require a degree, and I'm going to kind of give you a play-by-play, step-by-step on how to actually get that first job, because once you get that first job, you're set, you're never gonna have to worry about money again, and you're probably gonna have a super fulfilling job because I love the software development industry and I'm honestly, I, some dude, sometimes I can't even sleep at night because I love software development so much and if I could help another person who hates their job, like I hated my job, become a software developer, that would mean so much to me. So get that job and I wanna hear about it on the other side once you get it and I wanna hear some really cool, inspiring stories. So first thing, brief outline. A C-sharp developer, you're going to be building really boring apps. You're going to be building business apps. You're going to be building reporting software. You're going to be bu building billing software. You're going to be bu building internal corporate enterprise apps. C-sharp is a business language. It's made by Microsoft. It's kind of more boring. It's not as sexy as kind of like a lot of the other languages out there. But the best thing about C-sharp developers is that once you become a C-sharp developer, like I said, you're never gonna have to worry about money ever again in your life. The salaries are huge, the perks are huge, and um, I, the company that I work at right now, we li literally cannot find other C-sharp developers. So if you've got some experience and you got some apps, look, at, look on my LinkedIn and um, submit your resume to the company that I'm working at right now. But, so, as a C-sharp developer, you're going to be a web developer. Stay, if you're wanting a job, stay in web development because web development is where the biggest salaries are and essentially you're just a web de designer on steroids. You're building big scalable apps. You want to know two languages. Do not learn another language no matter what anybody says. Niche down and really stick to these two languages and you're gonna really cut down your time and you're really gonna shorten your um, the, the time to learn to actually get into the industry. You want to know JavaScript with one framework. So J JavaScript as a language is, um, you know, you're gonna to have to learn JavaScript. I suggest picking up five or 10 course paid courses, you know, drop a couple hundred bucks on it and pick up some paid courses on JavaScript and just start watching those and move towards learning Angular or React, which are kind of going to be under the umbrella of these frameworks. So once you start learning JavaScript, once you start learning, um, you know, the language of JavaScript, start looking towards Angular or React, which are frameworks that help you build the UI or the web interface. So think of React or Angular and JavaScript as what is like the pretty little part, you know, where you can click the button and that's going to be coding as well. Um, with this too, you're going to have to learn HTML, but the great thing about being a C-sharp developer is that you don't need to know CSS. You probably need to know a little bit. I wouldn't fully not learn any CSS, but you're not going to have to learn a ton of CSS, which is um, the part where you're making like boxes and you're making, you know, look really pretty. You don't have to worry about that too much. Just make sure you really get to know JavaScript, Angular, and React. And these days, JavaScript is mandatory in any um, development discipline. So if you move to Java, if you move to Node or any of these other areas, you're still gonna have to know JavaScript and it's actually easy, a lot easier to learn than C-sharp and um, it's going to kind of be your first baby steps in once you first get into programming and a lot of JavaScript courses are actually geared towards beginners. So it won't, the difficulty of getting in won't be that steep. So. Once you start getting, you know, a couple, maybe two or three months, start looking into C Sharp and do the same exact thing. Buy a couple paid courses on Udemy for C Sharp and start learning the C Sharp language. C Sharp is going to be very, very, very difficult to learn. C Sharp is a very difficult language to learn. It's not necessarily that it's that hard, it just takes a really long time because you have to learn something called object oriented programming, which is going to be absolutely pivotal to your career. Um, if you learn object-oriented programming, um, if you learn data structures, if you learn uh, a concept called solid or design patterns, 
you are going to be the type of person that's going to be working at Google and you're going to be taking off in your career, which is kind of where I'm at right now. So, so once you start getting a handle on JavaScript, you start figuring out if you like it or not. Some people don't even like development, but you know, if you don't like it, then you probably will move on anyway. But start going into C Sharp, start digging into object oriented programming. And that's when you, once you start picking those up, you're probably going to be about six months into programming. That's when you want to learn the granddaddy of them all, .NET. .NET is um, one of the most established um, frameworks on the face of this planet. .NET is used everywhere. It's used um, banks, Wells Fargo, small businesses, startups, everybody uses .NET. And not only that, but it's a super flexible, powerful framework. And with under and with underneath that umbrella of .NET, you see we're kind of like, you know, we're like a tree. We kind of have hierarchies going on here. You want to learn Web API. So, how is all this fitting together? So, the JavaScript part is going to be your front end, as it's sometimes called, and the C# -sharp part is going to be your back end. So, when you click a button on a website, it's going to execute code and that code is going to communicate with the C-sharp code. It's going to grab information from the database. The database is going to turn around and show this information to the user. And that's essentially how a front-end framework works. And tying all that together is what you're going to be doing on a daily basis at your job. So my job every single day is um, XYZ, uh, you know, product owner wants this, you know, data to show up and I go in, I fix the React or Angular code I fixed the .NET code to show a different way, or I'm just kind of in the code all day, making sure that that process is seamless. So user clicks button, data goes to database through C-sharp, C-sharp grabs the data, brings it back to the front end, and then JavaScript's gonna make it look all pretty and rinse and repeat. So once you get all of this learned, once you get a solid foundation for all your C-sharp and your JavaScript, the next thing that you want to kind of dive into is actually building your app. And this is going to be the most important part and even people who are computer science degrees are expected to build apps these days. You build three apps. Two, you know, you can make like a calculator or like some kind of like little rinky dink app. The two don't matter. Um, they're gonna be basically just fillers or whatever, but you need one big granddaddy app called the granddaddy app. This app has to have all the features that you're going to see within a corporate website. So you're going to need a user to log in, you're going to need um, the actual um, data to actually display in all types of cool ways, you need to look pretty. Um, you So here's a, an example of an app that can still continues to get me offers from jobs all the time. And your app needs to tie in, or your granddaddy app, whatever you want to call it, needs to tie into your actual daily life. So if you're a real estate agent, maybe make an app that um, is like a CRM for your leads. A CRM is a great um, way to build an app. Maybe your CRM, another thing too, is you can't just build like any CRM. You have to make your app like stand out. So maybe you build a CRM that gets leads for you or something, or maybe you build a really sweet CRM and it's fast and it's beautiful and Maybe it has like a really cool dashboard and it's all built in, it's all built in, you know, JavaScript and C sharp and it looks great and the user can log in. My example was a running app. So my is almost like a social media. It's a place for people to meet other runners. So I'm a person who likes to run a lot. And basically this app is a way to find other runners in your area and you can schedule races. It has like a race feature. It has instant messaging on it. Um, it has likes, it has followers features, and likes, following, instant messaging, real-time uh, messaging are all features that make uh, employers go, you know, nuts. They love stuff like that. And you want to stay, away, stay out of machine learning, stay out of di data science, and make sure that it's something like that. It's just, just displaying data in cool ways. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. It just needs those specific features that you're going to see like in a corporate app. Like a corporate app, an employee's gonna log in and they're going to manipulate data some way and they're gonna look at a dashboard and that's pretty much going to be it. So after you've built those apps, like it doesn't stop there and you're always going to need to keep learning and progressing. But the next part is you're going to have to kind of like actually, you know, go out into the workforce and start interviewing. 
Um, you're going to need a website, like a static WordPress. And I'm sure if you're a real estate agent, you already know like how to build a WordPress. Just build like a WordPress, put your apps, put your three apps on it. Tell a little bit about yourself. Make sure you have a cool hobby. A lot of times, like I've gotten jobs just because people have liked that I'm, I like to run a lot. So make sure you have a cool hobby as well too. Make sure you have a place where they can download your resume. And you can see all the examples of my apps in my portfolios and I even have videos on it on other parts. Um, the next part is your GitHub. So GitHub is where you're actually going to store the code. Make sure you include unit tests. And I can't really um, go in too much into unit tests. As a software developer, you're gonna have to just figure all this stuff out on your own. And um, you're, probably, you're just expected to you know, figure this out. So figure out what unit tests are, put some unit tests on for your code. It's gonna basically do like automated tests to make sure that your app, your app is functioning correctly. Make sure that you include that. Employers aren't gonna call you if you don't have unit tests and they're always gonna ask about unit tests. Next thing, when you're preparing for interview, interviews, um, download a couple of Udemy courses on how to actually interview for companies and you're going to be expected to solve like puzzles. So your employer is going to sit you down and, or your potential employer is going to sit you down. They're going to be like, solve FizzBuzz. And FizzBuzz is a type of algorithm that you do in order to um, sort through like prime numbers. And they're going to ask you stuff like that, but really the key is to just memorize how all this is done. Um, you know, make sure that you're dressed in business casual, make sure that, you know, you seem presentable, you seem likable, and that's really all that there is to it, and you're pretty much going to be good to go. Um, as far as that, once you are actually kind of like at that point, I would start suggesting looking at design patterns, because once again, employers go create, like if you know design patterns, employers are going to go crazy for you. If you maybe not even so much algorithms like algorithms do help a little bit but i've always noticed that employers in the c sharp world really go crazy for algorithms or uh, data or design patterns and uh, data structure so make sure you spruce up on a little bit of that and once again that's really there all there is to it you could go to college if you don't even want to chance it because the self-taught developer route you could i've seen people flop and not be able to get in and they spend like you know four years not getting in and they just end up going to college or just quitting so if it really bugs you and worries you uh, a computer science degree is going to be all, pretty much the only, only guaranteed route but still on the same token i've seen people who have computer science degrees who've kind of like not done well in their careers and i've been somebody who's kind of like a self-taught developer who's done absolutely fantastic uh other than that if you really want to boost your product productivity as a software developer, the only thing that I can recommend to people is that you don't consume alcohol, you don't smoke pot, and you live like a very healthy lifestyle. And if you're really serious about your career, I think that's just kind of like a given. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much it. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and as always, thank you for watching.